Okay? The first thing is to think about how you think about nutrition. When you eat something or drink something, is it fuel? So literally think about that. You're eating something, is it going to provide you fuel for energy or allow you to recover? And that comes from your self-concept. So one thing in psychology is, is well, it's performance psychology, is that we can't outperform our self-concept. Okay? So if you feel down about yourself and you just don't really think very highly of yourself and you get pressured in pressure situations, you're going to revert back to that. It's very hard to outperform that identity. Okay? The same thing with nutrition. We can't out-train a bad diet. Okay? Even at your age, we cannot out-train a bad diet. So we want to look at that, try to find ways and strategies to get better when it comes to feeling. One thing that helps is plan out all your meals a week or night ahead and put them in a bag. Take that thing with you. Okay, especially when you're running and gunning like you and you're working, you have all kinds of classes. That is significant right there, so plan ahead. We want to eat real food, okay? So most of us know some of this, but I'm going to cut to the center of the main things. Eat real food, okay? Not food that's processed, fast food, but real food that flies in the air, so animal protein, you don't have to go there. It grows in the dirt or swims. So it's kind of a funny way to say that real food is the way we want to go, not processed food in a box or a bag. Okay? If you're in the supermarket, shop outside the aisles. That's kind of a general little rule because all the stuff in the middle, a lot of it's garbage and processed food. You as soccer athletes want to hydrate yourself. You probably should be drinking other things than just water, by the way. You guys are sweating right now. Uh, you need more electrolyte balance too, okay? When you sweat and you get in the shower, do you ever notice how when you rinse your hair out, it's kind of salty, a little salty? Or you look in the mirror and there's a little salt kind of right there? That means that you're, you have a sodium potassium profile. Everybody does, you can get tested for that. If you feel that salt or you see it, you need to have more electrolytes, okay? So drinking more like Gatorade that's out there, I know it's kind of high in sugar, but they have endurance type of Gatorade formula that has sodium potassium in it, not just the regular Gatorade. So there's some good things that you can do out there. And bananas don't do it all. That's not minimal. So you want to hydrate yourself well with sports type drinks, not carbonated, but has high sodium potassium. Okay, about 1,000 milligrams per hour. That is important. Now remember, this is kind of where it's at because if you do a good job in here, but out, outside, you know, you're not really fueling your body the right way, then you're kind of hedging your bet. Okay, so you're kind of, you're, you're lowering that performance gains that you have in here. So these are things that we want to look at. We want to eat protein, lean protein from a variety of sources. These things most people know, so I'll be quick with this. Eat a variety of vegetables and eat fruits around your activity. So when you're eating fruit, have it before and after your training, like right now. That's a really optimal time to eat fruit, okay? To replenish glycogen, glucose, and muscles. Before here, how many of you ate before? Okay, training, very good. You should obviously every day, okay? Before training, you should eat. What do you eat? You gotta figure that out. The general rule of thumb is the more solid the food, like you have a sandwich, for example, a chicken sandwich or turkey, if it's solid food like that, it should be about two and a half to three hours before the training, okay? As soon as you get a little closer, an hour and a half, it's more liquid form. An hour out, 30 minutes before, that would be a drink, okay? Literally like a Gatorade or some kind of energy drink that doesn't, I say energy, it doesn't have caffeine, that, not that kind of energy, just regular carbohydrate type of drink. <clears throat> So the bottom line is we should definitely fuel before. That's really, really important, okay? Equally important is after training, like right now. And you have time, by the way. There's, there's misunderstandings, like I gotta run out and eat right away. You have about an hour, okay, to replenish glycogen stores. So you wanna have carbohydrates. Everybody's fired up about protein. But you wanna have about your hand. Everyone put your hand up. Okay, your palm, you can throw a fist up like that. It should be that amount of carbohydrates after. And then your inside palm or a deck of cards, protein after. Thumb up, that is like fats. That's how much fats you should have. Okay, carbohydrates is really important for recovery. Okay, and for energy as well. Okay, give yourself a 14 day challenge. So you want to change a behavior, change a habit, try to make it consistent. Okay, so could you challenge yourself to go 14 days and eat clean? Right, that's something to think about. 
But that's for another time. We'll talk about that later. Before each meal, mindfully take a breath. Okay? So think about the next time you eat, take a breath and think about is this fuel? Is this going to give you energy and is it going to allow you to recover? Okay? Here's all the research. Okay, I didn't make all these things up. There's a tremendous amount of research around uh, you know, diets and all that. What diet is the best? Is it vegan? Is it paleo? You know, Atkins, all that. They're all good if they're backed up by science. So they all work. It's what works best for you. Okay? The key is real food. Okay, you want to eat real food. And it does cost a little bit more money. Okay, so that's just there's no way around that. Alright? Okay. Uh, sleep is the second part. Sleep. Okay, so fueling is really, really important. Hydration is really important for recovery, and then sleep and sleeping well. A lot of times we think that sleep, you know, it looks like it's all pretty and nice and things like that, but sleep is a disaster. Okay? And we end up being you know, like that right there and trying to figure things out. Maybe you're someone who hits it, your head hits a pillow and you're thinking about all kinds of things going on and you're ending up like that, right? And hopefully, hopefully you're not like that because uh, there's a difference between passing out. There's a difference between passing out and then falling asleep, right? So we don't get better. That's, that is bad stuff right there for sleep. So just throw that out there, okay? Right there is sleep. You can barely see it. It's nothing sophisticated. It's really dark and it's, it's just, it's cave-like. And that's kind of how sleep works and we'll talk about it just briefly here. Okay? The talk right now on the world stage, every person I've talked to that is at the highest level, like right now, in the last five years, it's not about a squat. It's not about biomechanics like it was 12 years ago. It's not about ergogenics. Like, you know, uh, creatine or whatever. It's about sleep optimization and recovery. That's what the talk is right now, okay? So how can we recover? Sleep is a big part of that, okay? Uh, the next thing is that no longer is it bragging rights to put your hand up and say, you know, I slept two hours and I'm kind of the cool person because I'm still hanging. And you know, you slept eight, I slept two, and I, I'm outperforming you. That's a broken model, okay? Because you're basically bragging that you're suboptimal. There's no doubt about it, okay? Sleep's really important. It causes the most damage. I had uh, Pat, I don't, you, maybe you haven't heard of this guy, but he works in the NFL. I was messaging back and forth with Pat Byrne two years ago. We had a really good dialogue. I asked him the question, what's more important, you know, like movement, fueling, or sleep? And he said, simple. What you do is you just take one of them away for a day or so and see what happens to your body. So stay awake for, two, well, don't do this, but you stay awake <laughs> For 24 hours, it, your cognitive abilities are equivalent to 0.10 blood alcohol level content. So when you're sleeping five and six hours over a long period of time, that is messing you up. And that's messing up your circadian rhythm and your biological uh, recovery mechanisms, based especially for you when you're tearing up your muscle tissue in here. Okay? So it's really, really important. It's associated with academic performance. This is slam dunk. It's correlational research, but there's a strong suggestion that sleeping well is going to increase your performance athletically, academically, okay, and biologically. So here's kind of how we do it is if you're lucky, you can do this stuff, right? So you get, that's why you go to school and maybe you play soccer and you get good grades because then you get a good job and you get good insurance. You can go see all these people and figure things out, right? But you go see a sleep specialist to rule out any sleep pathology, any sleep disorder. There is still sleep disorders among the female population. Here's an example, sleep apnea. We tend to think it's about big, obese men that are 300 pounds. Not necessarily the case. It could be a skinny male. It could be a skinny kind of a female profile as well, okay, based on how your throat relaxes and if it's cutting off oxygen supply. So this is something to look at to see if you have that. Sleep hygiene in your room, it should be nice and dark, okay? I mean, really, really cave-like and cool. 68 degrees, the sun's coming out now, it's gonna to start to get warm. Make sure your temperature is nice and cool at 68, uh, and then eliminate any noise. So put earbuds, you know, in your, in your ears. When we went camping up in Tahoe, you guys were like kind of loud. I slept well, because I put earbuds in. So put the earbuds in, and then I have, well, you know, you can- music playing What's that? There's music. If it allows you to sleep, right, then you do what you need to do, okay? 
put family down. But uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so again, I can wake up because I have an alarm that buzzes, so I don't need to hear anything, okay? So that's just little things right there. Those are little things that can move the dial for you in your classroom, in the academics, especially, obviously, soccer. Sleep hygiene, okay? So if you're a ruminator or if you perseverate, like what is the fancy words for thinking a lot when your head hits the pillow and you can't go to sleep because you're thinking about all kinds of things, uh, welcome to being human and having a busy lifestyle. That's very common. Then get your phone, and hopefully not your phone, but a piece of paper, and write it out. If you have a thought, get it out of your head. Get it out, and then hit the you know hit the head of the pillow. So get things out of your head as best you can. Externalize it. So here's how we power down. Pre-sleep routine. Okay. Association. So. Have an association, this is classical conditioning, so a tremendous amount of research right here. Pair something with a pillow. Pair something. So every night you probably do something, you're not even aware of it. Maybe hopefully you, know, you brush your teeth, take a shower. As soon as you do that, do the thing that you do and then go right to bed. Pretty soon you start pairing that, you build an association, that's part of your routine. You will be better uh, able to fall asleep much quicker right there. So is it brushing your teeth? What is it? Is it your head literally hitting the pillow? Those are things, washing your hands, those are things that you might want to think about and be aware of, because that will help you get to sleep. What we're saying here is we don't want to have inconsistent things that we do before we go to bed. You don't want to check a bunch of stuff here one night and then another night go <clears throat> do this and that. You want to stay consistent with your routine. All right? This is one thing, I mean, I work with athletes on all this stuff. I work with a really good Olympic lifter on this right here. She said this really worked. And she was very, very active inside the head at night. And so what you want to do is when your head hits the pillow, like you're already there you're trying to fall asleep. There's a couple things. One is don't think about falling asleep. Just think about relaxing your body. So in your head, think about just relaxing. We don't want to think about falling asleep because it's very ironic because it's a paradox. You're not going to fall asleep if you're trying to fall asleep. Okay. So just think about relaxing your body and take 18 to 20 breaths. And you know, there's something to be said about counting sheep. So when your your head hits the pillow, count to 18, nice and slow, breathe in, pause, breathe out. And that would be one, get to 18. And most of you will fall asleep. Okay. And before that, think about relaxing. All right. If not, get up, start it again. Get sun early. Now the sun's out. We, we live in California. Pretty, we're pretty lucky. Get sun early in the day because it sets something called your circadian rhythm up and allows you to fall asleep at night, the more sun and movement that you get early in the morning. Okay? And then, of course, uh, when the lights go off, so it gets dark at about 8.30, you want to mimic that in your house. Kind of lower the lights as best you can. And here's the last thing right here is a little principle, 10, 3, 2, 1 principle. Uh, and I know there's, I don't usually talk about what not to do, but sometimes we have to when it comes to sleep. 10 hours, try not to have caffeine 10 hours before you go to bed. So just kind of organize that in your schedule. Three hours, no alcohol. I mean, most nights, right? Try as best you can. Two hours, no eating before you go to bed. And then one hour, you know, that cell phone right there, that cell phone is a stimulant, okay? It's a stimulant, so it, increase, it increases action potentials in your brain, electrical currents, it's energizing. So you wanna to try to get, you know, move that out of the room an hour out. You can watch TV because it's farther apart, it's farther from you, it doesn't emit something called blue light as much as a cell phone that's right here, okay? So all those things will allow you to be, to be able to power down. So fueling and then sleep optimization, okay? Now, the reality is you're in college, and you're running and gunning, you're having a good time. And there's another reality, I've been there too. So I know exactly what you do and, and how, you, how you go about doing things, and I understand it. It doesn't mean you can't have fun, you know, and you can't eat and have fun with your friends. You can do that every now and then. Just be mindful of some of these things. Try to incorporate a couple of them into your world and watch the dial move a little bit, okay? You, you watch your performance in the classroom will go up, and you will reap the benefits of what you do in here, especially with moving your body. Your body. The last thing I didn't really emphasize too much, again, is hydration is critical, okay? Hydration, and I, I did talk about that, 
but make sure that you're getting in sodium potassium, okay? That's some things that you can supplement on the side, especially if you sweat a lot. It's really, really important, okay? We're good? All right, any questions? I posted this. I know it's a lot of information. I did post it on the canvas, so if you guys want that, you can get it right there, okay? Just 